Hi everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Colin, callsign MM0 OPX and in this video we're going to be looking at some of the key components of the Chrisman phasing system. So in particular the switch box and the remote the remote, the remote box for it. Um, I thought about for some time um, how to do this video but I'm just going to give a basic overview and show you what I've done uh, so far. I'm not an expert um, so I won't, I won't try to be um, you know, um, if I can inspire some people to do the same, you know, then great. I'm actually following somebody else's drawing. So, you know, full credit's got to go to W4NFR. So this drawing here, which I'll show you a little bit later on there, it's a fantastic drawing. When I got this drawing, um, I understood 90% of it, but I actually took it into some of the, um, into my work, into the day job, and I showed some of the maintenance engineers and they were able to clarify the, the rest of it for me. But it's an excellent drawing. I've modified a couple of bits done away with a couple of bits um, and just made it to suit me. Um, so, without any further ado, let's go and get started. Okay, so where will we start? Well, we'll have a look at the uh, the end fire setup uh, that I made um, a few months back. So this just utilises uh, one relay, single pole, double throw. Um, so, really, really simple. Um, the layout of the um, SO239s wasn't ideal, um, but I kind of made a bit of a boo-boo, but uh, but I made it work. Um, so, so this is the uh, transceiver, and um, this is one of the, the second vertical. And um, these are the delay lines. This is the delay line, and this is the other vertical. Um, and this little plug here, this is a uh, this is obviously for the control to remote control it. Um, so. All we're doing with this one is applying power, so it's just on or off. Um, so it's either normally open or uh, normally closed. So it's it's really quite simple. Um, so you can see that a delay and a vertical is shorted out, and a delay and a vertical is shorted out. So if we look at our relay, so this is a relay here that I have. Loose. This is a, a little diagram here. So I'm trying to get that to focus. I get that any closer? Okay, so thirty is your uh, is the uh, is the transceiver. Um, eighty seven A is one of the verticals, and eighty seven A is the other vertical, and eighty five and eighty six is your power. Um, so I believe once you apply power, it then flips it flips from eighty seven A to eighty seven. Um, so I'll just show you that quickly with the multimeter. So you can't test these with coax. Test them with coax, you'll just get continuity through the whole thing. Um, so if we look at here, so this is this for here, and I'll only be getting a feed to one of these. See, so we're getting a feed to these because these are shorted out, and obviously nothing to these. Now, if I was to apply power to this, which I will do later, I'll show you actually on the uh, other set of files that to apl apply power, it would then say, send the power to the other side instead. So what actually happens, in essence, um, when you uh, you have your delay line connected, so the power the the RF goes to here first, but then it goes through this delay line, through this delay line, and it's delayed to here. Um, so how to think of it is the side that is delayed is the side that you will get most gain, and um, that's how I think of it. So that's the um, the first box that I made, and it works it works well. Um, so I'll continue using it and I'll keep that in the armory. Um, the switch box for that um, is very very simple. So so that's it. So northwest or southeast, but they could be whatever directions you want. Northwest would be North America for me. So hence why I've got it sitting there. Um, there's a 12 volt LED here, and all that does is is when I connect power, it just says I've got power. It it, it doesn't mean that I've switched it. It's just saying that I've got power. Um, and on this side, I have a, a, a power connector to plug the battery into. And we have this other little SATO connector um, that connects uh, via a cable um, to the switching box itself. Now, I've made all these connectors common um, across all my boxes because I only have one um, control cable. So although this only uses two cables, um, it's wired in the same way that if I connect it up to the uh, the end fire and broad fire switching um, setup, um, it, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll put a list of the components in the description. 
um, that I've, or the main ones that I've been using. But again, these little LEDs that I use, these were on uh, Amazon and were very, very cheap, a few quid. And I bought a big packet of these. These are just simple on-off switches. Again, um, I think I've got a packet of 10 and five or six pound uh, delivered from, from Amazon. Okay, so let's let's have a look at the um, the, the Enfire and broad, uh, Broadfire, uh, sorry, Broadside setup. Okay, so the boxes are actually the same as what I've just previously shown you there. I've managed to squeeze, I've managed to squeeze everything in here. Um, this first box that I made, this was the first um, end fire and broadside. I didn't have a, a, an aluminium enclosure, so hence why you see this effectively ground wire. So this would be the coax side, uh, the, the the shield side of the coax. So that's how I've done that. Now, when I actually when I set this up, the um, the SWR was about 1.7, which is fine. You know the rig can handle that, and, and my amplifier can handle that. So that, so that's all good. But another thing somebody pointed out to me is I'll probably get some RF uh, seepage from this, um, where the uh, the metal box um, should make, give me a little bit of shielding. Um, but this was a really, really good uh, learning curve to build this. But as I said, it's it's not my design. Um, it's this design here. So I'll I'll put again I'll put a link to this. Um, there's a whole website uh, dedicated to this. So two element phase verticals, Crispin phasing, uh, W4 NFR. So I've not actually looked this uh, uh, this ham up. I really should do that, but uh, they certainly get full credit for this. Um, so the main um, so he actually he's, he's actually got a parts list on this. So once you if you have a look at the link, you can. Um, you can see what parts you actually need, but I'll put a link to some of the main parts in the description as well. Um, so everything was, I understood everything, but what I didn't understand was the relays. This is, I went, mm, I understand them now, but what I did was I took this drawing into my work, um, as I said earlier, and um, I got the maintenance engineers to actually just um, help me label up um, uh, what relay connection went where. So effectively you've got um, this relay, this, this switches between them, so this switches directions of end fire, and all this relay does is it shorts them out, so it allows the RF to get to get sent to these both verticals at the same time. That's that's all it's doing. Um, it's a really good draw on this, um, and it shows you the directions of the gain. So end fire or broadside. Um, the control the control switch in the shack. I made this a little bit simpler. In this drawing here, you can see they've got an LED and a resistor, um, but I didn't need to do that because the um, because these LEDs are the rated 12 volt uh, 12 volt LEDs. I've already got the resistor built in, so so I didn't need it. And I forgone the um, the on off switch. Um, the way I seen it is that if there's an on off switch, and that just gives another um, element to go wrong. So it has the LED there, and that's all that signifies is that it's got power connected. I've got a lot of um, sort of professional music equipment, and uh, you know none of that has on-off switches. You just plug the plug the power in, and away you go. And this probably the single most expensive part of this was this switch. So this is an SP3T. So you see, it's got four terminals. So it has a common, and then it has three terminals um, to use. And actually, when it's in the, uh, I think when it's in the West position. So this is east, broadside, and west. Um, it's not actually connected to anything, but it's all kind of explained in this drawing. Um, they even tell you what feed lines to use. So this is for quarter wave phasing. Um, quarter wave, yeah, quarter wave phasing. So you need two 84 um, degree feed lines. I need a 71 degree um, delay line. I'm doing it slightly different. I'm using eighth wave phasing from another design I've seen. Um, and that uses a 39 degree feed line, sorry, 39 degree delay line and uh, 157 degree feed lines there. So I will show you in another video how to make the delay lines, um, but I think that deserves a video of its own. So what we'll do is I'll hook, I'll hook this up to a multimeter, I'll hook this up with the cables, power, we'll come back and I'll show you the switching on the, uh, the multimeter. Okay, so we have the... Um the phasing setup. It's um, set up here on the bench. So these are the. This is the remote control cable. So this is thirty meters of um, three core cable. Um, obviously, this is the power cable. That's just just got it to a little SLA battery. Um, and as you can see, if 
I disconnect it, power goes off. So that's just telling me that I've got um, power connect. You, you can hear the relays um, switch in there. Okay, so I've actually just tested there just before um, just before I've, I'm, I'm doing this and it's it's switching okay, so that's good, so it's 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 working. Um, so on the um, on the control box you could see I've got um, east, broadside and west. So you can see when I've got it switching to the west. So you can imagine that um, this is how it's sitting in the field. We have an antenna here and an antenna there. So obviously um, we've got east and we've got west. So keep that in mind. So let's check with the multimeter. Let's see where we're getting a signal or where the, where the signal is going. So nothing to this side. Uh, signal going to this side. So what will happen is the delay line will be connected between these two lines. So the signal will go here first, it will go through the delay line and then it will go to that vertical. Um, okay, so because this is the side that is not connected, this is the side that is delayed and therefore this is the direction that the gain is going. Um, so that's how to remember it. So if we, we, if we move the um, switch to the centre position, so this is broadside, so um, I should have um, signal going to both sides now, which I do. If I switch it again, so that's me um, pointing east, I should have signal, the, the signal um, going to here first. There we go. And nothing there. So this is the delay side. It's, uh, as I say, it's, that's east, so that's the side that's delayed, so the direction of gain is going this way. So, I guess before I um, pack things up here, um, I suppose it's worth just maybe sharing some of my experience of actually building this, and, um, you know, what I actually thought, and kind of construction notes. Well, this this this, um, this box itself, you see I, I've actually had to offset um, the SO239 connectors. Um, ideally, I wanted them in a row, but this box was just too small. Um, but I've I've made it work fine. Uh, you want to keep your wires as as short as possible. It, it does mention that in the um, in the drawing, but uh, I can't stress that enough. Um, if you don't, you'll probably get some maybe funny SWRs. You maybe need to do some matching here before you go back to the transceiver. Um, the relays that I'm using, as I say, is they're they're. They're very, very cheap. I didn't say that these were just from Amazon. And I got I got 10 of these, and I think it cost me £15. So really, really cheap. Um, and I actually went with these. I did some research on social media and got some opinions, and that's why I went with these. Um, um, you know, I'd like to run QRO with this. I've still got to do that, um, but uh, that's the hope that it'll handle the ACOM okay at full uh, UK legal limit. Um, I've tried to use as good quality components, um, you know, as I can. The SO239 connectors, uh, I buy these from uh, M0 MET Matt. These are these are fantastic connectors. That's that's all I use in all my projects and work. Um, these are all um, a PTFE a dielectric and a gold plated terminals. They're just a fantastic connector that he sells. Um, really, really good and really, really good value. So you need obviously you need five of those. Um, the enclosure, um, this was, I actually got this from RS Components, this is a Hammond enclosure, but I think you could probably get away with just an RS Pro um, die-cast enclosure, it doesn't need to be this, um, there or thereabouts, or you may have something lying about. Um, this this 3-pin SATO connection, I googled 3-pin connectors um, till the cows come home, but this is actually what I settled on. It's maybe not the best or the strongest, but it's, it's fine for what I need. It, I like the fact that you can you can plug in and you could screw on, but you could use any three pin connector that that, that you have. Um, these smaller wires, these are just because uh, these are these are actually what's switching. This is the uh, positive and negative, and this is what's switching the relays. And they don't need to be big wires because you just need very very low current to do that. But the bigger wires, these this is um, one point five millimeter squared wire, so this is what's handling the RF. So I've used I've used a little bit. Um, heavier gauge wire for those. Um, so yeah, I mean it is really really simple. 
when I started out on this and researching this, I thought, oh no, I can't do that. But it really is simple. If you can use a soldering iron and you could use a few hand tools, then you can make this. Um, and obviously the control box here, so it uses the same uh, saddle connector. Um, these power plugs that I got, these were, again were off Amazon, kind of standard um, plugs. And again, I think I got uh, five male, five female, or even ten of each. I can't remember. Five of each, I think it was. And it was less than ten pounds, again, from, from Amazon. Um, I already mentioned the LEDs. These were dirt cheap. Um, and, uh, yeah, the most expensive part, as I said, I think I said there, was this SPT3, SP3T switch. Um, um, and I got this from Maris Components. Um, I've actually got another, I think, another two or three of these. Um, I bought a couple from Aris Components to get the free postage, but then I seen one on, on eBay. Um, so I was only one to bid on it, so I probably got it for, for about half price. So I've got a few spares of these. So these are these are a nice switch. Um, so in another video, I need to I need to show you how to make the um, um, the phasing lines and do the calculations. Um, I have my little book here, so I've actually been working on the twenty meter. Um, 20 meter calculations um, so that's the that's the, the sizes for um, for the 20 meter 20 meter band for eighth wave facing um, yeah and that's for the check frequencies as well so I'll do that in another video because I need to do that with the analyzer you basically need to um, measure the right length of coax you need uh, taking the velocity factor into account um, and then cutting a little bit longer and then trimming it off on the analyzer till you get to the uh, um, minimum Z impedance I think it is um, until you start to see it kind of just bottom out and then it's going to it'll start to rise again but just at that point and um, that's when you've taken on enough and then you could fit your um, PL259 plug <coughs> to the other side so I'm going to wrap things up here shortly um, I hope you've liked uh, what you've seen uh, what I've shown you in this video um, it's been a real good journey for me and you know, I thank everyone that's, that's helped me um, across social media and YouTube and so on. It's been really, really good. Um, and, you know, I'm not done yet with that journey. I think there'll be optimization to be done. You know, what, uh, what really attracts me to the, to the system is that it, with working with 8th wave phasing as I can fit it in, in my garden. 40 metres in my relatively small garden, you know, that's 5 metres apart. Um, so we can do that and obviously 20 metres that's only going to be two and a half metre spacing um, so next job for me is I'm going to cut feed lines and delay lines for both 20 metres and 80 metres so I've got the coax, I've got the connectors they just came in um, just after New Year there so I'm going to do that shortly um, I will do a video as I've said um, about cutting the um, feed, line, feed lines and the delay lines because that is quite important and um, what I found was with the uh, Super 8 coax, it was a Nevada uh, branded coax. Um, can't remember its exact, exact name, but we buy it from Nevada here in the UK. And it's not too bad, and it's not too far off um, RG213 uh, spec. And we're working down in the lower frequencies, 40 and 80. The losses are going to be negligible. But when I went with their um, velocity factor, it was a little bit out. I found that I still needed to, to trim more coax. So if you're doing, if you're going to make your your feed lines and your delay line um, without an analyzer, you need to bear that in mind there. So you're probably better um, um, better using an analyzer or giving the um, uh, the coax to someone else to cut. Um, but you can do it. You know, there's instruments in the market you can do it with. You know, nano nan, nano VNAs which are you know less than forty pounds. Um, if you can afford one of those, you can certainly do it in that, and it's a it's a great bit of kit. So, um, you know, give me the thumbs up, give me the thumbs down if you like it, if you don't. Um, if you've not subscribed to the channel, it would be very much appreciated. It's really encouraging seeing my subscrib subscriber numbers um, uh, heading up the way, so that's, uh, that's really good. Um, so, until the next video, it's bye for now.